Corbin, it's Honey again, and this is one of my favorite books too. It's called Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey. And yes, it's the same Robert McCloskey who did Make Way for Ducklings. But now we're going to read Blueberries for Sal. This was one of Rebecca and Matthew's favorite books when they were your age and a little older actually. Let's see if you can hang in there with it. It's a long book. But it starts out with this wonderful picture of an old-fashioned kitchen. This is a wood-burning stove. And this reminds me of Corbin and Mama, when Corbin would help Mama in the kitchen. I wonder what Sal is doing right there. I wonder, can you tell? I think that he's playing with the O-rings because Mama is pouring things into jars. And these are the O-rings from where Mama is doing some canning. And also, did you notice? It looks like she has the window open because the curtain is blowing right there. Whoops. Here's our title page, Blueberries for Sal. And that looks like Sal is picking blueberries. Oh, but there's just one. Blink! In Sal's bucket. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal went along. No, she brought along her tin pail. And her mother brought along a large tin pail to put berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother. Then we will have food for the winter. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them in her little tan tin pail. Kablink, kablink, kablink. Actually, Corbin, I read that wrong. It said kablink. Kaplank, kaplunk. Then she picked three more berries and ate them. Then she picked more berries and dropped one in the pail. Kaplunk. And the rest she ate. Then little Sal ate all four blueberries out of her pail. Pail is another word for bucket, just in case you were wondering. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them in her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry in her mother's pail. It did not make the kaplink because the bottom of the pail was already full of berries. She reached down inside to get her berry back. Though she really didn't mean to, she pulled out a large handful because there were so many blueberries right up close to the one she had put in. Her mother stopped picking and said, Now, Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. <clears throat> her mother went back to picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and just ate blueberries. Corbin, do you like blueberries? Mmm, honey likes blueberries. On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat the blueberries. Little Bear, said Mother Bear, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. Corbin, come to think of it, do you remember in our last, we read one book about hibernation? Where the animals had to go sleep for a long time? That's what Mama Bear is talking about because the bears will go into hibernation. Little Bear followed behind his mother 
as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat berries. Then he had to hustle to catch up. <clears throat> because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and sat down right in the middle and began to eat blueberries. Munch a munch a munch on his blueberries. On the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all the berries she could reach from where she was sitting and started out to find her mother. Look at little Sal taking a walk. She heard a noise from around a rock and thought, oh, that's my mother walking along. There's Sal, and that rock is really big, isn't it? And she thought she heard her mother. But it was a mother crow and her children, and they stopped eating berries and flew away saying, caw, caw, caw. Then she heard another noise in the bushes and thought, well, that is surely my mother, and I will go that way. But it was little bear's mother instead. She was tramping along, eating berries, and thinking about storing up food for winter. And little Sal? Well, little Sal just tramped along right behind Mama Bear. By this time, little bear had eaten all the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. So he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be found. He heard a noise from over a stump and thought, oh, that must be my mother walking along. But it was a mother partridge and her children. They stopped eating berries and hurried away. Then he heard a noise in the bushes and thought, well, that is surely my mother. I will hustle that way. <gasps> Look at little bear. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking, walking along, picking berries and thinking about canning them for the winter. Little bear hustled along right behind her. Little bear and little Sal's mother and little Sal and little bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the blueberries on Blueberry Hill. That's little bear and little Sal's mama. Over here's little Sal and little bear's mama all on Blueberry Hill. Little Bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind her and thought it was Little Bear. And she said, Little Bear, nom, nom, nom. eat all you can possibly hold, swallow. Little Bear said nothing. She picked three berries and dropped them, kablink, 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 into her small tin pail. Remember, pail is a word for bucket. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make a noise like kerplunk. Boom! She cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. This is not my child. Where's Little Bear? She took one good look and backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. Then she turned around and walked off very quickly to hunt for Little Bear. I've always liked the mama bear's eyes in this picture. You can tell that she is very concerned about where little bear is. Meanwhile, little Sal's mother heard little bear tramping along behind her and thought it was little Sal. She kept on picking and thinking about blue canning blueberries for next winter.
little bear padded up and peeked into her pail. Of course, he only wanted to taste a few of what was inside, but there were so many and they were so close together. He tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. Now, Sal, said little Sal's mother without turning around, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to can these for next winter. Little Bear tasted another tremendous mouthful and almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped, oh, My goodness, you are not Little Sal! Where, 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 oh, where is my child? Little Bear just sat there munching and swallowing and licking his lips and munching some more. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even very small bears, like Little Bear. <clears throat> then she turned and walked quickly away to look for Little Sal. She hadn't gone very far when she heard kerplink, kerplink, kerplunk. <laughs> she knew just what made that kind of noise. What do you think makes kerplink, kerplink, kerplunk? Little Bear's mother had not hunted very long before she heard a hustling sound that stopped now and then to munch and swallow and snuffle. She knew just what made that kind of noise. Little Bear and his mother went home down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way and full of food to store up for next winter. There they go. And little Sal and her mother went all the way down the other side of Blueberry Hill, picking blueberries the whole way. And they drove home with food to can for next winter, a pail of blueberries and three more pails besides. And here they are, Sal and Mama canning the blueberries. The end. Corbin, I hope you enjoyed that book. Look, there's Little Bear eating blueberries. We need to see if we can find a book called One Morning in Maine for you.